I'm going to talk about cake, which usually brings a smile to our faces because for centuries, cake has represented celebration, friendship, generosity, kindness. But we might be killing ourselves with kindness, I'm afraid, and that is why I'm also going to talk about obesity. I know this is a conversation killer, but we need to have this conversation for the sake of all of us. I've spent most of my working life in the corporate world, but a couple of years ago, I went back to university to do a master's in obesity and weight management. And to be honest, a lot of what I learned scared me. But my research found something that might help us all start to tackle this problem of obesity. And that's what I want to share with you today. So what scared me? Two-thirds of the UK population is overweight or obese. Obesity can limit lifespan by up to eight years. It is associated, probably even causes, hideous diseases. Type 2 diabetes, 13 cancers, heart disease, liver disease, Alzheimer's. I could go on and on. But what really scared me was the lack of control we all feel we have over obesity. Everybody argues about the causes and the solutions. Meanwhile, we get more and more confused, more and more overweight, and more and more ill. No wonder the NHS is struggling. About 10, 11 years ago, um, a group of some of the best brains in Britain from a range of disciplines got together to try and sit down to make sense of the causes of obesity. And this is what they came up with. Now, I know you can't see the detail there, but you can see the complexity. Clearly, this is more than just eating too much and moving too little. What this scary map describes is an obesogenic environment, a landscape that generates obesity. Think about our high streets. Every other outlet is trying to sell us food that is not good for us and that we didn't even know we wanted. And even if we try to eat healthily, so many foods are laced with sugar and other nasties, we end up eating unhealthily anyway. So, does that mean our environment is making us fat? Well, yes, that is a huge part of what is going on. One group of researchers said that obesity is the, our natural response to an obesogenic environment. To use a software analogy, our bodies have evolved over thousands of years with software that's prehistoric, and we haven't had the upgrade that would help us cope with life today. Here's a couple of examples of that that you might recognize. Firstly, our brains work against us. Our brains house our pleasure and reward centers. So in my brain, even thinking about a Belgian bun sets my pleasure centers off as they remember how gorgeous it tasted and felt last time I had one. Meanwhile, my reward centers are joining in, urging me to find, seek out that, research, that, that, that pleasure and reward again. This is a learned hedonic response. And it's one of the things that makes resisting delicious food so hard. We clearly can't do anything about our obesogenic high streets. We do have some control over our own homes, but we spend between half and three quarters of our working lives, uh, waking hours at work. So if we're lucky and we have, an obese, uh, and we have a workplace that is not obesogenic, it's easier for us to spend a great deal of our working day able to make healthy choices. But what if something is making our workplaces more obesogenic? And that's something I'm thinking of, I'm afraid, friends, is office cake culture. So that's people bringing cakes and other sweet goodies into the workplace for friends and colleagues to share for birthdays and other celebrations like that. So many employers 
invest in workplace health and well-being programs. So you might have, have healthy options in the canteen, um, efforts to try and get people to use the stairs, not the lifts, and uh, you might be lucky and have a corporate gym membership. Employers know it makes sense to have a happy, healthy, and therefore productive workforce. So where is the sense in introducing, even welcoming, more sugar into the workplace when we know it increases our health risks? But maybe health risk isn't the whole story when it comes to cake. My husband has a client that is a really successful, innovative company, the top of its game, very high employee retention. It seems to be a genuinely delightful, enjoyable place to work. But they do have a cake culture, and this seems to be wrapped up in how enjoyable it is to work there. And he mentioned it to them one day, and they said, oh, yes, everybody puts on weight when they come to work here. We call it the company stone. <laughs> so is office cake a potential health risk, or is it a sociable way to boost morale? Well, people have argued about this for a long time, but I've just done some research. I investigated workplace cake culture with a 1,000 UK office workers, and what the research found helps to cut through the confusion and does present a way forward. And no, it doesn't involve banning cake because it doesn't need to. All right, quick gallop through the research. In most workplaces, cake is available uh, for at least twice a week. In a quarter of the places, it's three or four times a week. Fundamentally, if cake is there, people eat it. Nearly a third said it made them put on weight. Nearly half said it made it harder to eat healthily at work. Nearly two-thirds said it made it harder to follow a diet. So that sounds like round one to the office cake as a potential health risk camp. But... 81% said it was a great way to bring people together. 83% said it cheered people up. That sounds like round two to the office cake is a sociable morale booster camp. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, yeah, but nobody's forcing anybody to eat cake. Why on earth um, do we need to do anything about this? People can make up their own minds. Well, in most workplaces, office cake was just presented, openly displayed in the offices, and that proved a real distraction for a lot of people. And people would find themselves, or they do find themselves, eating cake, even when they've just had a meal. So this is where our learned hedonic responses are coming into action. And it, there is even good research to show that willpower is in limited supply. So don't be surprised, don't beat yourself up if you've been superhumanly strong all morning and you've resisted the cakes. But come four o'clock in the afternoon, your willpower evaporates and you succumb to a muffin. <laughs> but the really Im interesting, important part of the finding in this research was this. How often did people think was the ideal frequency for office cake? 95% said once a week or less. So this means there is a mandate to reduce office cake. What a fantastic opportunity to make our workplaces less obesogenic. They, the workplace could even become a sort of haven, a retreat from the big, bad, obesogenic world out there. Now, if somebody wants to have a Twix at their desk, nobody's going to stop them. This is about making healthy choices the easy choice for most of the people most of the time. And it might even make cake special again. But there's one last question for you. If 95% of the people think that office cake is best if it's once a week or less, why is there so much cake around? Well, I think we have to go back to social influencing for that, because we are herd animals. We like to conform. So if you're one of the 95% and you're looking around and you're seeing your friends and colleagues uh, eating cake again, you're not likely to stick your head up above the parapet to stop them it's much more likely that you are going to keep quiet and let the cake continue. So office be cake becomes the norm because we don't feel able to say anything about it. So what if we create a way to say something about it? Well, it's easy. We just need a conversation about office cake. 
How do you start the conversation? You could share this TED talk. You could do a little survey monkey uh, and ask what your colleagues think about it. You could even discuss ways of getting together in the office that don't involve cake. I don't have all the answers, but people aren't daft. Put people in a room, get them talking with each other, and they will sort it out. Oh no, there were three birthdays in the same week. They will sort it out. So this is just an idea, but it's an idea based on data and evidence. And it's something we can all do. Think of the power of a conversation that could improve the health of workers. Doesn't matter where they work, what kind of work they do. It would be so powerful to improve their health. So if you're an employer, start a conversation. If you're an employee, start a conversation. If you're a student or a member of a group, start a conversation. Because we have nothing to lose but the weight. And we all have our, our health to gain. Thank you.